Well, who's going to let go? Who's going to let go? I'll be right back. Hold on. Hold on. Yes. Andrei Pavlovich, a girl has been admitted with triplets. She's in labor. Two fetuses in distress. How much do they weigh? Small ones are 500 each, bigger one is 800. Okay, we'll wait. I hope you can excuse me, comrade lieutenant, for my earlier behavior. Emotions take over. It's a good thing that you brought her here. It could have been much worse. And now? And now it's just bad. Listen, do me a favor. I need you to check on two people who suddenly disappeared. They pulled this young girl out of Urupinsk, give her a full medical examination, rent a flat, buy clothes, they feed her, and then slip away. If people always acted logically, you and I would have much less work to do. Arshakuni David Arta Sheshovich. Arshakuni Ludmir Vladimirovna. It's a rare surname, we'll have a look. Please do. Where are you going? If we don't start labor with this girl now, two of the triplets will die and the center will be closed for sure. What? You finally decided to come back? I haven't decided anything yet. Will you be back by seven? I have a personal growth training session tomorrow at eight. Of, of course. course. Thank you. Nadia, wait. Thanks for helping my dad. Microstroke? They suspect transient ischemic attack. Oh, to be honest, I thought it was the end. Nadia, forgive me. I acted like a fool. Exactly. <laughs> yes? Vitals are leveling mm -hmm. up. Let's continue tocolytic therapy. Prevention of fetal respiratory distress and follow-up in dynamics. How's Oleg Viktorovich? Better. I won't be able to pay. I can't pay for the room either. Please don't worry about that. And don't worry about anything at all. Think of this as your most important task for the next few months. What should I do? Eat, sleep, and rest. They'll bring you breakfast now, okay? And what about the kids? How are you doing? Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi there. Dina, where's the orchestra? Where's the band? Where are the fireworks? They all called in sick. Sorry, I had to cancel. Hello there. Hi. Due to the morning. Is this a joke now? 
We had three babies die yesterday, Ruslan. Samaryadov went to intensive care because of stress. Yeah. I thought... I thought it was only me. What, jet lag? Hell of a thing. I see. So, how's studying going? You haven't changed your mind about leaving the hive to become a starving surgeon? No, I haven't. Oh. By the way, you've got a patient waiting. Dina, I told you, let everyone leave after 12. She was very persuasive. Hi. I was expecting you this morning. I came to see you as a doctor. What's wrong? Why did you take this test? Are you trying to get pregnant? No, the doctor did it for me, just in case. Well, then let her repeat the test. This one is a repeat. <sighs> Russ, I know that asking my gynecologist brother is a bad idea, but who else will tell me the truth? <sighs> will... Will I not have kids? In a year or two, but nothing's guaranteed. I'm 26, and you know very well that I'm working 16 hours a day because I'm on a roll. I've never been with anyone longer than three months, and in fact, I never wanted children. Look, live like you have been. Not everyone has But you kids. have to understand me. You live exactly the same way. <laughs> no, I don't live like that. If I was on a roll, I wouldn't have gone to the U.S. to change my specialty. What can I tell you? You know... I'll support you either way. Do you want me to introduce you to someone? IVF is always open to you. What if I don't want IVF? Then you need to think about it. And properly, not for two seconds like you usually do. Fame, success, money, it's all very cool. But is it really enough for you? Samaria Dom. Kirik, is that you? <laughs> Come on, what her? Something happened. Yes, I'm here. Sure, come over. I'll be waiting. Can you make a fist? Where's my bump? What about my daughter? Didn't the doctor come to see you? He didn't say anything. Is she alive? Is she? Did you want to run away? You wanted to leave your own mother who invested her life in you. That's what you wanted, right? Step outside, please. No outsiders are allowed in here. Who's an outsider here? Go away. I don't want to see you. Go away. What? Step outside, what? please. I am not to blame for the child's death. <laughs> I'm not to blame. Please. No. I'm not to blame. This is unacceptable and not for an individual center, for the system as a whole. You can, of course, argue that infant mortality has increased in the country as a whole, or complain about the lack of obstetric staffing. But even in such a dire situation, we have no right to stop caring and ignore professional standards. As of today, the committee starts its work at the center, which will carefully study all these cases, as well as episodes of infant and female mortality throughout the existence of this institution. Chief Physician of the Center, Samoryadov Oleg Viktorovich, is officially suspended from his post. But the decision on the acting department head of OB, Kashina Ala 
Valerievna, as well as on the head of the neonatology department, Lazarev Andrei Pavlovich, will be made separately. I'd like to introduce you to an honored doctor of the Russian Federation, doctor of medical sciences, professor, who will be taking over the reins of the medical center as of today, Kolmogorov Yuri Alexevich. Thank you, Gennady Nikolaevich. Colleagues, good afternoon. I'm glad to see familiar faces in the audience. You are well aware that I constantly supervised the work of the center, being a representative of the health ministry. I'm aware of everything that's going on, and I'm aware of the changes that have taken place over the last few years. And I have to admit, not without regret, that unfortunately, a lot has changed for the worse and requires urgent and very tough intervention. Five children have died. Natalia, I'm glad I saw you. A friend of mine brought his wife over there, 30 weeks pregnant, twins. She's fainting, losing weight, and has headaches. Doctors at the clinic say iron deficiency anemia and vegetative vascular dystonia. Take a look, please. Come on. Good afternoon. Hello. When did the fainting start? Um, it's probably been a month and a half since I've been this way. You see, she started to swipe the cups across the tables. I'm a waitress. She even spilled over customers. At the restaurant I work at, they thought I was drunk. She sort of walks, staggers, and then starts messy writing on the menu board, even though she has great handwriting. What's your actual situation with alcohol? Non-existent. I don't drink. My father died from it. I don't want to. Stand up. Please put your feet together. Stretch your arms out forward and close your eyes. Easy, easy. Impaired motor coordination plus fainting spells. What does that mean, Pasha? Mm, cerebellum's acting up. Exactly. MRI, full exam and cytology. Got it. Let's go. Come on, baby. Should I go with you? Yeah. And also, please prepare an office where the committee members could quietly interview all the medical staff. And in about um, 15 minutes, I'd like the personal files of all employees and heads of departments on my desk. All of them? All of them. First of all, Bakmitsyeva and Bazanov. Just a minute. Genya. Dina, meet Genya. This is Evgenia Mitrich, our new intern. Please give her a uniform and assign her to Natalia Vladimirovna. Yes, but... Okay. Understood. Genia, best of luck. Yeah. You can change in there. Who is she? Why don't I know? Bakmetyeva number two. Really? Kolmogorov's protege. <laughs> Direct proof that he's not just a maniac, but a serial one. Why? Hey, guys. Do me a favor and go and look in the locker room for What's a minute. It? Trust me, it's a surprise. Take 
that genius with you. <laughs> A drugged up patient escapes the ward, goes downstairs, walks past the emergency room and does not meet a single worker. And these two praised professionals of yours, they did several ultrasounds on a pregnant woman. After that, her bloated liver was mistaken for lungs. Hello, Valerina. You have taken on an impossible task, managing two departments at once, the OB and the antenatal clinic. Of course, everything went all wrong. Here, let's take a look. You personally could have prevented at least two of the three deaths yesterday. That's one ultrasound that showed no fetal abnormalities. You did it. All right. Here you go. You, you were examining a patient with two uterine scars, and you didn't even try to convince her that it would be fatal to have a baby in that situation. Aloshka Valerevna. Oh, my dear. What am I supposed to do? How do you explain yourself? Who's that? The new intern. It's Kamal Gorov's student. His favorite. They said to look after her. Looks like a hemangioblastoma. You don't get hemangioblastoma in your 30s. How do you know that? From personal experience? From the textbooks. There can only be hemangioblastoma if it's Hippolindau disease. And how do you check that? Examine the ocular fundus. Okay, get the patient and go ahead. She's clear. No hemorrhage or vascular overgrowth, and no signs of intracranial hypertension. A textbook is a good thing, but life is more complicated. Take her to an ophthalmologist and a neurologist. We'll check. Cocky. Cocky? But she could very well be right. Well, I heard that she said... What is it? Stressful. How did Kashina cope with her work at the Women's Counseling Center? And do you remember how she used to see such and such a patient and this and that? I thought that just a little bit more and they'd start... Natalia. Hmm? How are you? The department is demoralized. What is Kashina thinking? What can she do now? Knock some sense into their heads. Is this really how it's done? Huddle together and sow panic in the corridors? Well, why don't you do it? Hmm. I've already taken her position once. I really do not want to do it again. I'll diagnose a couple people and go home. What do you mean, home? He's here. We have to do something. I do not want to see him. Okay. It'll be fine. Bye. What a windy city it is, St. Petersburg. Why did you name the boy? Misha. That's a good name. By the way, Natalia, tell me why it is that some of your employees don't show up for morning rounds. It's not my call, Yuri Alexevich. I'm temporarily out of maternity leave and intend to go back on leave after I've dealt with a couple of patients. You were right. The patient has a hemangioblastoma. It was the size of... A ping-pong ball. Great. You know, bro, before I met her, I lived a completely simple life. My parents decided where I study, who I hang out with, whether to change my Beamer for an Audi. When I brought Svetka to meet with them, they thought it was a joke. They even gave me an ultimatum. Either dump her, 
or we're taking you off the payroll. That was probably my biggest decision in life, leaving with her. You know, Pasha, I've never been as happy as I've been these last six months, living in a tiny rented place out in the middle of nowhere. Is it bad? Yeah, she has a brain tumor. Is she... gonna die? I don't know, Kier. We have to operate urgently. And the kids? Don't worry. They haven't abandoned you. They must be extremely busy. It's always like that with adults. Sonia, Noreen, Tanya. We'll just wait for them together, won't we? Yes? I'll find her. Here, I'm sorry. I've got to go. Alia's water broke. She's in labor, didn't make it to the OR. The first girl's head is already quite low. They've stopped giving talk a little. How come? Because we're a mess. They simply forgot. Okay, breathe. <laughs> Don't push. Breathe. <laughs> breathe. Okay, rest. <sighs> Breathe, breathe. Rest. They wanted triplets so badly. They said that three children were the minimum. One for the father, one for the mother, and the third one for procreation. Are you crying? Cry, just push too. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's it. Push, push, come on, come on. Keep pushing down. Come on, just breathe, breathe. That's it. You're doing great. Pavel, ultrasound. Mm -hmm. Genya, CTG. <laughs> Get some rest before the second one. But you said that the other two wouldn't make it. Stop the labor! Quiet, quiet, quiet. My darling, giving birth is like <laughs> launching a rocket. There is no stopping it. Embryonic vesicles are intact. Trichorionic triamniotic triplets. Wow, the words you know. I can't feel anything. When will it start again? <laughs> Forty-five minutes. Complete cessation of labor. Fantastic. We need to stimulate. We'll wait. Natalia, listen. Risking a girl's life? for the sake of hypothetical chances for two kids that nobody knows. Do you really think keeping this pregnancy slash premature birth is realistic? On the 11th of November in 93, Peggy Lynn gave birth to a daughter. Xenia, don't show off. Let's not get into history, we don't have time. It's important. She gave birth to a son 84 days later. And in the year 2013, Maria Jones Elliott of Waterford, Ireland gave birth to two girls 87 days apart. I'm writing a paper on twins. 
Natalia, the council is starting. They're waiting for you. Pavel, don't leave her. Got it. Brain MRI revealed a cystic tumor on the right hemisphere of the cerebellum and oculus hydrocephalus. Total removal of the hemangioblastoma nodule is planned. What does neurosurgery have to say? We need to operate as soon as possible. The tumor is growing quickly. Can we do this operation in one of our own operating rooms? No, we've never performed a surgery of this complexity. Difficult access and it's a large tumor. I think the patient should be moved to a neurosurgery center. After what happened yesterday, we have no margin for error. It's not just the patient's life on the line, it's also her two children. We can save them too. And you're suggesting that emergency birth should be allowed? Yes, and then to transport. All right, prep her for a C-section. And you'll be covering. Okay. I have one more question for you. Natul, not as your boss, but as a doctor, this is stupidity. Why do you want to prolong this pregnancy? Because we can do it. Who are we? We need months for all of this to make sense. But you don't want to work with me. We have other doctors and other heads of department. Ah, uh -huh. and today we realized how this department functions without you. Okay, Natalia. Do whatever you think is right. How's Noreen? She has a long way to go. Like the rest of us. What are we going to do to make up for the wait? Books? Or do you want us to bring you a television? Your wish is our command. I didn't finish War and Peace at school. I'll get it for you. Do you have it with you? Tocolytics, antibiotics, dexamethasone. Alexei Nikolovich, you're accountable. Ultrasound, C-reactive protein, clinical blood test every day. Thermometry control six times a day. Listen, let's trust Evgenia with it. It's a goldmine for a person writing such a paper. Okay, understood. I'll look after mm -hmm. it. Have a rest. Thank you. Dina Rafaelovna, what's the story with the nurses? I agree. Line them all up in the courtyard and shoot them. Are you them. joking? What is this? What are you doing? Kolmogorov made me gather a bunch of papers. That's what I'm doing. Do you realize that if that girl had someone, the report would already be with the police? Do you want to go to prison? Pray you don't get fired. Yeah, got it. Thank you, Lord. The triplet's biological parents are dead. Car crash. Don't tell Alya yet. Alla Valerevna, we need to get the team together. Shake everyone up a bit. I've been fired, Natalia Vladimirovna. From the office. How are you doing? Uh, pretty mediocre, if you must know. I told you a long time ago, don't be so hard on yourself. Where would I be now without it? Well, I don't know, probably married to some old geezer, right? I love you very much too, Bazanov. I would have killed for that phrase a year and a half ago. Oh, by the way, I got you a gift from the US, let me give it to you. Speaking of the geezer, if anyone asks why we are not together and how you feel about your child being brought up by Lazarev, please tell them that we broke up. And that you've never been interested in children as a separate concept. Mm-hmm. Now in English? It's just... Our last meeting, when he showed up at my door with the ring, 
He thought you were the kid's father, so please maintain that story or he'll give me hell. Okay, you got it. Shame on me. I haven't even had a stroke, you know? And I'm lying here in a private room with special care. Like some king. Remember a key piece of feminine wisdom. <sighs> to just relax and have fun? Exactly. What's in the center? What about it? Hala. Mm. You can't lie. I can. It's just that you've known me too long. You've known me too. What if I don't tell you? Will you unhook it all and run away? Mm. Well, what can I say? It's a fascist regime. Pompous speeches, poorly concealed threats, and now the interrogations. You and I are suspended. Who is in charge now? That clown? Call Magarov. Just don't worry, okay? You've got a heart condition. And liver, kidneys, brain, among other things. Personally, what I've missed most of all is your sense of humor. The composer's not joking. What are you talking about? Cure, boys are like worms now. If you take them out, they may not survive at all. We've already explained to you that the children will have a chance. And actually, let's just think about you now, okay? I'm gonna die anyway. This way, after one more month, it will be 34 weeks. You'll be fortunate to have a whole month. I must be pretty lucky then. Will you give us a minute? Okay? Here, let's go. About two years ago, I talked a patient like you into an emergency cesarean. She really wanted to carry her baby to term. And I told her that her life was more important than the health of her baby. At the time, I was absolutely sure. And now? Maybe I'm not so sure now, but it doesn't matter. She had a complication, and she died. And the baby survived. But he lives without his mom. It seems to me that giving birth is not so difficult, even if it's hard. But that's nothing. You owe your children a lot more than that. How old is your husband? 26. He's not my husband yet. Are you sure you want to leave him with two babies in his arms? Yuri Alexievich. Ah, uh, just a moment. I had an agreement with Samoriadov that when I returned from the U.S., I would start working as an obstetric surgeon at the same time and leave IVF. Rosalind, you can see that I already have my hands full. Let me sort it out. Just give me time. How much? <laughs> I recognize my mentorship. Just a bit. Don't worry. By the way, why do you need it? You've carried on your father's work so well, and suddenly... <laughs> you know, my father was an outstanding scientist. These are different ah, things. Ah, I forgot. You're a modest man. But what I haven't forgotten is how badly you suffered when your father left you. And you couldn't treat your child like that yourself, could you? I don't know. Sometimes we make mistakes as parents. Yes. It happens. <laughs> Natalia, thank you for letting me assist. I miss this thing terribly. We were a good team, weren't we, Natalia? Like Spartak and a Romancef. 
How long has it been since they've won anything? And you know, I even like that you're still angry with me. Strong feelings are good. They leave hope. For what? For example, the fact that you will return to the center. Kitchen and playground in front of the house is not your thing. I've only met doctors with a mission four times in my life, you know? In Russia, only twice. And one of those doctors is you. Hi. How's it going? Who's the other one? Not me. Surprisingly. It's my child, isn't it, Natalia? How are you feeling? I am kind of dizzy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, surgeons, BP drops dramatically, so I'll have to tilt her over, and you will have to show the wonders of equilibristics. That's it. Work, 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 work. Mirror. Guys, BP's 70 over 40. Get out now, for God's sake. Check. Excellent. He must start. He must start. How's it going? I'll take both of them to the ICU. Then we'll see. Stitches. Give me uh, two cc's of the second metasone quickly. It was Mesitan. I messed up. It's about to blow, Sasha. What? It's okay. We're handling it now. BP's 180 over 100. Quickly, 150 propofol. Quick. I'm intubating, guys. Fentanyl, 02, Esmeron, 40, fourth blade, seventh tube. Sewing up the uterus. Are we good? We're fine. Guys, we're not doing so good. I feel like the tumor is pressing on the respiratory centers. I can't get off the ventilator until the surgeons remove the tumor. Transportation is impossible. Copy that. Preparing for trepanation. Shave the head. Well, here. We cut out the tumor. And? It's okay, it's benign. The prognosis is positive. Congrats, you're a father. <laughs> uh, how is she? Not great, but she is stable now. Can I go and see her? All right, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Okay, uh, okay, the scrubs. Милый друг, я так люблю твои глаза. 
даже то, что видишь все меня насквозь, с равнодушием на меня смотреть нельзя. Так нельзя. Милый друг, я так хочу тебя обнять. Только это может нас теперь спасти. И щекой к щеке прижаться постоять. Sans se cacher, mon autre côté. Tu es mon évidence, ma seconde moitié. It's strange to be in Kashina's office again. Going home? Ten minutes. Twenty. Bossed around in your OR. What's that? One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. My favorite book when I was 17. Holy crap. 1962, the first edition. It's funny that there's someone who remembers the things I've forgotten about. Kolmogorov. Was it from him? Bazanov. Why are you so late? You have a place to live, don't you? <laughs> yes. I just don't have any friends yet and nothing more interesting than work. Especially since it's so lively here. Yeah, lively. That's for sure. What about... Kolmogorov? Forgive me for the straight question. And unethical. And very personal. And rhetorical. But at least now I realize what my status is. It's hard to blame the status, Senya. Kolmogorov has a strictly defined reputation. Besides, to study in Moscow and intern in St. Petersburg, there has to be some good reasons. Either an original thinker, an idealist, or a dreamer, with a large volume of poetry in your hands, and definitely with a broken heart. And I'm not? Well, I don't know. You're too smart to be an idealist. I wouldn't vouch for the safety of my heart, though. 
Yes, I'm very worried about the past affair between my teacher and your headmistress. <laughs> Not exactly what I mean. It's just that your eyes are sad even when you smile. <laughs>